Truck Talk Media. C10 Talk, episode 248. We've got an Arkansas daughter who was able to get her dad's truck back. Great story. Here we go. As much as she's not a public speaker or doesn't really like the like the attention to be on her, she really wants to spread the message of uh, suicide prevention. I think that this truck will be a good way for her to share that message some and um, and show what it what it does to the people that you leave that love you. Damn, girl. Seeing is believing. And our title sponsor, United Pacific, makes seeing a whole lot easier. The crispness of the United Pacific LED headlights, taillights, marker lights, and more makes seeing and showing your truck that much better. It's time to upgrade your old dim halogens for new LED headlights, taillights, and more. They offer the brightest and latest LED technology. Headlights are available up to 1600 lumens, easy to install, and it fits right in the OEM housing. How about upgrading to sequential taillights? They're DOT approved and ready to ship today. DOT approved. And for you 73 to 80 GMC and Chevy square body guys, they've got the new front parking lights, LED with stainless steel bezel. Think UP Car Parts. That's UPCarparts.com. Let me tell you what Melbourne Post is packing right here. I've right? got 411 Posi Track out back, 750 double pumper, Edelbrock intake, scored over 30, 11 to 1 pop up pistons, turbojet, 390 horsepower. We're talking some fucking muscle. What does that do? Does that blow your mind? That just happened. Welcome to C10 Talk. Your C10 Truck Podcast. And now I have a chance to be the best. Maybe the best in the world. My old man is a television repairman. Got the ultimate set of tools. I can fix it. I said I got 50 cents in that juice box, and all I can hear is your mouth flap. Did you hear that? Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. What's up, what's up, C10 Nation coming at ya. Now this is going to be a little bit of a quicker one for uh, our normal length. I was going to combine Lindsay's interview with Aaron's from the Lost Angels Children Project, but uh, obviously Aaron and I went a little long, so I didn't want to put them together. So you got a little bit of a shorter one, rad story. Lindsay, with the help of her boyfriend, Drew, Essentially, they're able to bring it back to life. That's a cool thing about social media. Somehow on a story or something like that, I see it. I kind of deep dive into it. And I'm like, this is pretty cool. And then come to find out there's a, an even deeper story and meaning to everything that's going on. Like life is, right? There always is something. So really a cool story. And the depth of it, I think you're going to dig it. So uh, episode 247, like I talked, that's going to be with Aaron from the Lost Angels Children's Project. And they're going to raffle that truck off. So get online over there at uh, the lostchildrenscp.org, I think is the website. Or you can jump over to IG, the Lost Angels Children's Project. Of course, I've tagged it and done a few posts. So get over there and uh, buy your tickets. It goes to a nonprofit. It goes to support the kids. Uh, it's it's an awesome deal. So you got uh, a few feel good stories going on here in the C10 Nation. We've got daughter who finds her dad's truck, and we've got kids building a C10 that are going to give it away, and the money's going to support the school where they're at. So again, a lot of awesome stuff going on. All right, speaking of awesome stuff going on, UP Car Parts has a sale really for our listeners. UP LED 20. That's UP. LED20, upcarparts.com, save 20%. It's that easy. Use the code UPLED20. 246, jumping back, Mr. Zachary. Hopefully you've checked that one out. Zachary from Hoonigan. And then uh, we've got a few shows. So the C10 Intervention is this weekend, September 4th and 5th. That is brought to you by United Pacific, UP Car Parts. And they are doing the light up the night on Saturday. So the cruise in downtown Woodland, California, C10 Intervention, the 4th and 5th. And then after that, the following weekend, we're going to head east over to New Mexico, meet up with Alex from El Chuco, C10 Club El Chuco, and they do a little cruise to the pines, and we're going to meet up at Rio Doso, New Mexico. And then the following weekend, September 17th, Waxahachie, Texas, the one, the only 
C10's in the park. I did see Terry do a little post where uh, they've got that downtown square and they're going to open that up. So instead of 50 top trucks, they're going to be able to put like 100 top trucks uh, downtown uh, party on the square Saturday the 17th. So as always, that should be another good one. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy the pod, whether you're traveling, whatever you're doing, working in the shop. We always appreciate your support. Lindsay's story is really cool. Lindsay, Andrew, thanks again for your time. Love what you're doing. Love the truck. I'm so glad you guys were able to bring it back to life. And more importantly, the meaning behind it. All right, C10 Nation, have a great week. Thanks for tuning in. Stay out of trouble. Do what you do. Like it, love it. Let us know how we're doing. Questions, comments, concerns. Ronnie at Truck Talk Media. Ronnie at Truck Talk Media. Late. All right, all right. How about a little good story, the feel-good story? I came across Lindsay's IG the other day, and there was a picture of uh, her and her dad when she was a little girl, and, and her dad was right there, and then right in the background was the truck. So I've got Lindsay Scott, and I've got Drew Lenz, uh, who I think is probably the foreman slash uh, boyfriend helper. Lindsay and Drew, thanks for coming on C10 Talk, and uh, I look forward to hearing the story. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, my pleasure, man. So, I mean, exactly like we kind of talked about, I just love the story. Anytime we can get a situation like this, we need to bring it to the people and share that said story. And uh, let's go. I mean, you put that thing together the other day, Lindsay, I came across it and it just, I, I just kept watching it. And I'm like, I reached out to her and she's like, can you, can you text my boyfriend, Drew? <laughs> I'm not too sure. And I said, let's just, let's put it out there. And I think the, uh, the C10 nation loves a good story and, uh, I'm looking forward to hearing it. So let's, let's rip, let her rip. All right. So this was my dad's truck. It's a 1965 Chevy. And, uh, he bought the truck back in the eighties and it was just a workhorse. Like my mom said, they hauled hay in it and lots of firewood and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, I remember, I remember the truck. I probably remember more pictures of the truck, but in the early nineties, he ended up selling it to a local farmer and <clears throat> years went by you know and uh since my my dad has passed away uh, in 2009 he actually uh, he chose to take his own life which was a very hard very hard thing and uh when that happens you really just uh you really just want to hold on to anything that you that you can keep of them you know like i used to just keep all kinds of things but uh so anyways, a lady had told me about 15 years ago that her father-in-law had bought the truck from my dad. So then she said it didn't run anymore. It was still out on the farm. And I said, oh, would he ever want to sell it? And she said that she would ask him. And I guess he didn't want to. I never heard anything back. And then 15 years later, I met, I mean, I met Drew and he was into old cars and everything. And uh, I ended up reaching out to her. And saying, hey, you know, does, does he still have that truck? And she said, actually, that they were just talking about me. And she told him that we needed to get in contact. And he said that he would give me the truck back, but that he wanted to keep the motor and transmission because that's what he actually bought it for. And so she connected us and... I go and I look at it and I send Drew all these pictures and he ended up telling me that I said, well, would you, would you sell the whole thing? And he said, yeah, that he would, uh, he'd sell it to me for what he bought it for, which was $500. And so we said, here we go. You know? So when you look back, it's such a cool story. I love that they had they knew right like they're like we we need to reach out to Lindsay. like they knew right you had somehow yeah. you had made this contact with his daughter-in-law i think is what yeah. you're saying and then and then it's like what are you gonna do with that old truck clyde and he's like i don't know and it's like well don't forget about that girl Lindsay, down the road you know and yeah. then <laughs> so by meeting and and now that you and drew are you know in a relationship did that just mm -hmm. build your confidence or did you see like dude this guy has a lot of cool trucks and volkswagens and all this rad stuff and you're like hey dude how does i want to hear how you sell him on this 65. <laughs> well actually when when we met we were just talking and i had a an old truck that was my grandpa's and it was an old ford truck and 
Drew, he really, he's so selfless and he just likes to help anybody, you know, and he's not a Ford guy, but <laughs> so I, I tell him about this truck and he was like, you know, we can, we can get it running. We can. And, you know, I don't know anything. I didn't know anything then about mechanics or anything like that. And, you know, he just said that he would help me when actually it was, it was too far gone, you know, and then we got into our relationship, you know, and, and this lady just, when I reached out to her, she just said, you know, you've got to have it. And Drew just, he dove into it with me. He said, we're going to do it. And I'm going to teach you that way you can do it. Nice. You know? Drew, what did you think when the, you first laid eyes on, uh, not on Lindsay on the truck? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. So that other truck that was her grandpa's, it was burnt and it was just, uh, there was no, no chance in saving that. Of course I didn't want to work on a Ford either, but, um, yeah. So she sent me pictures of the truck and she told me, well, it's, it's on this guy's property and it's kind of back in a field, but we can get to it. And, um, so we go there, of course it's raining, pouring down rain and, uh, and we get down there and it's in the very back of like 30 trucks. So, uh, it took a skid steer or a backhoe and a, a buddy of mine that's just a real good operator and we drug this thing out of the woods i mean it was uh way back in there and um you know there's you know rat shit to the to the top of the sea and um you know it was pretty rough but i knew how much her dad meant to her and so i was just willing to do whatever we needed to do you know to get it going was it was uh so did he mention like how long it had been sitting uh, the only report we got as far as that was that his son, the last time it was driven, his son drove it through the Creek and flooded the engine. And, um, he said they drug it out with like a tractor. And then as soon as they got it out, the son reached over and turned the key and started the engine up. So we were pretty sure it was going to be, you know, toast, but, um, but yeah, we just went for it. And, uh, we, we bought the motor and transmission in, included, like she said, cause, uh, you know, she just wanted it to be her dad's as much as possible. Uh, turns out that the engine was was toast. Um, there was a crack all the way down the lifter valley, but transmission was still good. So we just kind of went that route, you know. Cool. So you get it home and uh, did you did you have a plan or did you just dive in, Linz? I mean, we just we just dove in. We started. Uh, well, we ended up we pulled the motor out. When we brought it home, we had to chain it onto a tree and then pull the trailer out from under it because the tires wasn't even on the wheels. And we. Okay. So you guys, I just want to, I, I, I think you guys live in Arkansas, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so the audience is like, what the hell? All right. So, <laughs> so uh, we got the Mike Loshes over there in Arkansas and uh, uh -huh. now we've got Lindsay and Drew now. So you chain it to a tree and then you just kind of slow roll the trailer out. And then next thing you know, the, the truck, I'm thinking, are they get, somebody going to steal it? Why are you training it to a tree? <laughs> now we pulled the trailer out from under it and then he worked evening shift and I worked day shift. So really all we had was, you know, in the evening, late evening to work on it. So we would just do little by little. Well, we ended up getting the motor out of it and we set the motor in front. We kind of messed around with it for a little while. And then we, we cleaned out the bed of the truck and we thought, well, we need to take this bed off so we can, you know, start on the underneath and everything. So Drew and I, one night it was so cold outside i mean we ended up getting the truck on new year's so we're probably talking in january we're out there and it's not time and we're gonna take this bed off of the truck well the only way we had to do it was to come over the tires because there's a tree on one side of it and there's the motor on the other side of it that was a pretty pretty fun experience just, that we just, should not have done <laughs> just the two of you or i'm assuming a yeah couple. just just the two of us <laughs> yeah nobody that's that's a that's crazy that's a lot of that's he, you're strong because that's heavy <laughs> that's what i thought when we got done yeah you're like <laughs> holy shit well hopefully you took the tailgate off first because that that's there's a little weight there but obviously that was a little bit of a chore were you surprised was the truck in better shape than you had thought worse shape than you had thought or right where you would you had kind of thought it might be when you're looking for classic Chevy or GMC truck parts, brotherstrucks.com is your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration parts. 
So whether you are restoring an original or looking to customize that classic truck, BrothersTrucks.com has thousands of the highest quality truck parts for you to choose from. So head over to BrothersTrucks.com and order your free catalog today. And don't forget to follow Brothers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates and special offers too. Hey guys, how about a happy 10 year anniversary to the team at Pro Performance? For 10 years, Travis and his team have provided their customers the best products on the market for our trucks. They sell Dakota Digital, Bear Brakes, Boyd Welding, QA1, Vintage Air, and more. They're your one-stop shop for all your truck part needs, stocking fast-moving items to help with production delays. So think Pro Performance when you are creating that parts list for your build. AZProPerformance.com. That's AZProPerformance.com. Was the truck in better shape than you had thought, worse shape than you had thought, or right where you had you had kind of thought it might be? Drew, why don't you take that? All right. So um, we knew right away that it was going to be a patina truck. So we weren't really worried about like the damage on the outside and stuff. You know, all most of that damage was created by her dad. You know, there's a lot of cool stories like he tried to drop a tree in the back, you know, arguing with his buddy that he could make it land right in the back and stuff. So, you know, there's a big dent in the top of the truck and, you know, some, (laughs) you know, scratches down the doors and stuff. But, you know, uh, she still got her uncles and stuff around so we got to hear all those cool stories and stuff so we were aware from the very beginning that it's going to be a patina truck we're going to leave it as original as possible so as far as that i wasn't really worried um yeah there was a we knew the floorboards were going to be toast because how much stuff was in the floorboards and stuff but for the most part um yeah it was it was as good a shape as what we expected you know cab corners are always toast and stuff like that but yeah it wasn't too bad so when you look back at, you got it, you know, right around new year's, how long did the build take? Um, about 18 months. Okay. So, and yeah. then when, what new year's like 20 or when did you, how long have you had it? Uh, yeah, I, we've, I've had it for two years. So in, in 20. So you're just now kind of, when we see you posting it and you're driving it, you're it's, it's still kind of, you know, fresh for you to be back in that seat and back in the saddle, if you will. Fourth of July was the first time I, I drove it. Oh shit. So we're just a little, little bit over a month or coming up on that. Yeah. So really that's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, Thank what, you so much. You, what, what was that feeling like? I mean, I've, I've always been into, into the old vehicles. I never knew why, you know, I was younger, I was a teenager and I would see one and I would tell my friends like, Oh man, look at that. Look at that. And they just, they didn't get it, you know? And now for me to have my own, and for it to be my dad's, I mean, it was just, it was just so, so special. Yeah. It's super cool. You know, and to sit there. And like I said, you got to love a story when, you know, a truck that you were sitting shotgun and now you're driving, you know, and it's, and it's yours. Right. So is there anything that you like, let go back to the motor. Did you just pull another motor out of another truck or what'd you guys do? Yes. Uh, I told you, uh, I have a buddy that's a really good operator and he actually drives a dump truck for a living. And, um, he's lived in the same town that we live in for a long time. And he's always been a car guy. And he remembers his grandpa sold a 283 Chevy to somebody else, um, about 20 years previous to that. And, uh, we were just racking our brains trying to find a 283 because it was a factory 283 and she wanted it to be a factory or back to back to 283. So, um, yeah, we just reached out to everybody we could. And, um, one of my buddies, the same buddy that drug it out of the woods for us, he, uh, he messaged a friend and said, yeah, it's still sitting in my garage. Um, you can have it. He said, uh, I'd like a load of dirt cause my buddy hauls, uh, with a dump truck. So we paid $50 for a load of dirt. My buddy hauled it for us for free and, uh, and ended up with a 283. Um, I believe it's out of a 61 Corvette. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but it was factory four barrel 283. So it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. We ended up tearing it down and measured the bore on it. And it's actually 60 over pistons in it. Um, it's pretty hopped up motor. So we got pretty lucky for ending up with that for 50 bucks. Yeah, I would say so. That's pretty cool. So I'm just doing my uh, Mesa Public Schools math, 500 for the truck, 50 for the motor. 
You guys are really racking up the bills on this thing. I tell you, 550 <laughs> bucks. The old dirt motor, that's uh, that's that's kind of its own story right there. So the funny thing, too, and I'm sure Drew talked about it, Lindsay, but you probably tripped over about 486, 350 small block Chevy motors to find that oh. 283 because they're everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and it's like, no, nah, I got to have that 283. And I can only imagine. Drew, were you pushing her to, to go 350 or LS or anything or just like, no, nah, um, buy one? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not much of an LS guy. I know I'm gonna hurt some feelings with that, but I just I just like the old school carbureted stuff. I mean, to each their own. I guess that's the cool thing about cars is we all kind of get to do what we like with them. But um, yeah, she was dead set on the 283. There was no talking her out of that. But uh, yeah, it was a bummer because I had 350s sitting all over my yard. You know, I could uh, we could <laughs> drop one in right now and be done with it. But uh, yeah, we had plenty of work to do, so we just kind of said, well, we're just gonna keep looking and. We had a bunch of people reaching out on Instagram and saying, I've got one in Florida or I've got one in Ohio mm -hmm. and stuff. And it was just like, well, that's a bit of a commitment. And next thing you know, we got one 10 miles up the road. So it kind of worked out that way. Yeah, it really did. And and only for a big load of dirt. Yep. Yeah, that's super cool. Gets. Now, okay, so you uh, you got a little taste of that motor or doing some motor work, Lindsay, I, I, I hope, which I think is cool that yeah. you were some wrenching on that um when you look back what's been your favorite part of the of you know bringing dad's truck back there's like these all the, like he's saying the scratches and stuff all over it um on the on the dash there's like all these numbers carved into it and we don't we don't know what they are i mean the the theory has been that they were like hay counts or something like that um I was sitting out in front of it one day and I was changing the fuel pump. And this was, Drew's been out on the road for two months. And so I was out there changing the fuel pump on it. And I sit down and I look at it and in the trim on the fender, like I was so frustrated and just sitting out there like, oh man, okay, I got this. And I look up and my dad's name is carved into the trim on the fender, which is actually the fender that we need to replace. But I don't know, just finding all that stuff and, you know, I'm having what to, he had. I'm going to have to see a picture of that for sure. So the funny <laughs> thing is, is we probably can get your replacement. It might cost more than a load of dirt for that fender. But <laughs> then, then I almost think you take that fender and you, you know, you, you prop it up. Uh, well, you did say it was on the trim though. So maybe, maybe you keep the trim on there and just yeah. replace the fender, depending on how bad the trim is, but the story the, the truck just keeps on giving, right? Yeah, it does. It does. It's like the, it's like the giving tree, right? You read that story, <laughs> you know, it just keeps on giving, keeps on giving. And to think that this has been in your family this long is your, is your mom still around? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what is. does she think when you come rolling up? There's her pride and joy. Her her favorite daughter comes rolling up, and she <laughs> she's got she's got to be like, "Are you kidding me right now?" I mean, I think I think everybody's pretty shocked. I don't think they really thought that it was going to happen. You know, I went and we went and pulled it out of this field and brought it home, and it's like that's not ever going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sat over at Clyde's house for 15 years. You guys think you're going to get this thing on the road? You're crazy. Yeah. The motor I mean, doesn't even work. 30 years later, you know, I bring it back home and it's like, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Did we ever decide about right when dad sold it to him? I mean, 30 years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. He drove it for so long and then, uh, the boy parked it, you know, or put it in the water and they parked it. So that's, that's, that's really crazy. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a true resurrection. Do you guys have a name for this thing for the truck? Um, Ellie May. All right. That's a cool name. That's a really cool name. <laughs> I love the color of the truck. What's your, what's your favorite part? Do the color, the interior, what, you know, just the patina, obviously some of those stories, do you, anything else jumping out of you? I love, I love the patina. I love the hood on it. Um, I really wanted to keep, keep the doors, you know, it's, it's a lot harder to, to keep a patina truck. I feel like than it is to just get one and, you know, paint it or replace a fender or, you know, whatever. Um, both of the doors had, had big dents in them, you know, where they had been bent back and the driver door was really just too far gone. What happens is you get the, the, the Calico truck, right? Where you get like a yellow door, you get a blue truck, you got a red hood. And sometimes that even looks kind of cool. And again, it's just each little thing has its story. And, and it's just, like you said, it's the giving truck. So we take from one, we give it to another. We we went on a trip to to Texas and Drew 
Drew's hometown, like there's a bunch of junk, junkyards around there. And uh, we went picking. We went picking and uh, we found a door. It's not the exact match, but we like it. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Drew, what about you? You got yourself into this. You probably opened your mouth and like, all right, babe, we can get it. We can save it. And then uh, <laughs> next thing you know, it's freezing cold out there. You're moving truck beds and replacing motors. And what, what, when you look back over this journey for, you know, 18 to 20 months, what, what kind of, uh, what are you thinking? Well, the most important thing for me was that I knew how important it was to her. So, uh, you know, over 18 months, sometimes we work on it every single day. Sometimes we don't even look at it for three weeks. You know how that kind of goes. You kind of get burnt out and need some time off. But uh, we did just keep grinding. And most of the time, like she said, it was at night, just after work, before work, yada, yada. Um, but it was really special to me because I knew how much it meant to her. And it was fun for me to kind of teach her as we went to. And um, I let her do as much as she possibly could. I did a lot of the heavy lifting besides the bed. She did help me take that <laughs> bed off. That was, I won't do that again. That was a bad decision. But, um, yeah, the bed is actually my favorite part of the truck. Um, we sourced some local um, black walnut, and uh, we had one of the one of our buddies. He's a woodworker. We took it to his house. He planed it all up really nice, cut it all for us and everything. And then we, you know, put the bed back together. And uh, it was really, really. It looked really good, you know, when we were done with it, and it was something to be proud of. You know, we had him. Um, had him stamp his little brand in the backs to, to just show. And, uh, really a lot of people came together to make this happen, you know, and, uh, it wasn't just us, but I, I did let her do as much as possible. I wanted her to be proud of it when we were done, you know, and a lot of it, she did herself, you know, well, it's cool because by letting her do that, you get to see her kind of grow. And now she has so much more pride and ownership in, you know, 65 Ellie may, Lindsay, what would you say was your, uh, what was the hardest part for you? I will say that I will, if I never saw another wire wheel again, I would be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, a wire wheel almost indicates sometimes a face mask too. So you're not getting all that breathing, all that in. So, uh, safety glasses, wire wheel and uh face mask and go to town. Here you go, babe. Yeah. Yeah. I spent, I spent a lot of time wire wheeling. I saw the pictures of the chassis. Uh, it looks so good. You had to, you know, that, that hard work, you know, paid off and you had to kind of take a step back and think, look at this girl, this chassis looks so good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. Very rewarding. Uh, what was your favorite part? If that was your least favorite part or the, the kind of the part you wouldn't don't want to have to do anymore. Any, anything that you really just in, enjoyed? Just all of it, man. This is, this has just been like the best experience, you know, I'll butt in on this one. Um, whenever we did the motor, um, it wasn't in the truck and we didn't just start it up. Uh, so we did a lot of work to the motor and then didn't get the reward of hearing it run for like another six months. So that was a little tough. Uh, I think she would have had more fun building the motor if we would have been able to start it right afterwards. But I think that when I saw the most joy was we did the interior last mm -hmm. and I pretty much was, I, I had my hands full at the time, so I just kept putting it off on her. Do this, do this, do this. And she pretty much put the interior together herself, and it really completed the truck, you know. So you could see it all come together at that point, you know. Uh, she put a lot of money into the seat and, you know, floorboards and sound barrier and the whole nine yards. And I think once all that was inside the truck, it was a, it was a big sigh of relief, and I could see the joy for her whenever she was seeing, okay, I could sit in this thing now, you know, so. That's right. All right. So you, you guys live in Arkansas. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there like a plan to, to get it out and take it to a show and, and show off Ellie Mae? I'm, I'm so ready. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think what shows are out there or if there's something that's close. I'm sure there's a few things going on and I, I think the community would, would love to, to see it. Um, Drew, is there yeah, some good shows out there? Yeah, we got the C10 Nationals, which is in uh, Dallas, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth at the Speedway usually. And we tried so hard to get the truck done in time. You know how that thing kind of goes. The final touches end up nickel and diamond you and stuff like that. So, but we will be there next year. Um, 
I, I'm sure you're familiar with Sweet Patina. The uh, those guys they drive around the country sp- spreading awareness to ALS, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, and Lindsay. As much as she's not a public speaker or doesn't really like the like the attention to be on her, she really wants to spread the message of uh, suicide prevention. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that this truck will be a good way for her to share that message some and um, and show what it what it what it, what it does to the people that you leave that love you and um i think that that'll be a a big thing in her life in the future maybe maybe not now she might have to grow into that but mm-hmm. i think that's something she's really passionate about and uh i think this truck is going to be a, a good way to get that message across yeah that's a great point uh very inspiring and and i think you you have a voice Lindsay, that uh you know, people would love to hear the story and then how that reflects and that, you know, we can only let you say and explain what you feel from the perspective of suicide prevention. I've lost family members from the same thing. And, uh, you know, as my job, I, I, um, I get to see a lot of, a lot of crazy things. So I think that, uh, the community would rally behind that cause and behind you and your truck and, and what that means to you. And, you know, uh, you can only try to try to be strong and, and just think, well, dad, I'm driving your truck now, you know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, just reflect so positively on that and then be that role model that you are or that you will kind of like Drew said, grow into. Yeah, I hope I hope that that happens. I think that it will. Well, when you get out to shows, you get to tell people about the story about Ellie Mae and how you rescued this girl. And, and uh, I always just kind of laugh about that. Like if, if trucks were humans, right. Or a horse or whatever it might be, you're like, dude, you rescued that thing. It was sitting out behind 30 trucks. Just, Mm -hmm. you know, nobody gave a care in the world. And then there's this girl that just wanted to bring this thing back to life. And I think that that's such a cool human humanitarian perspective thing about these trucks and when people find them and they resurrect them and uh, it's, it's just a good feeling. And, and then you talked a little bit about Blake from sweet patina. Love that guy. Love what he does. Obviously you guys have some patina sauce all over this thing. So, so there's, yeah. just a, there's a lot of cool things going on. Did you have a manufacturer or a company that you worked with that you really, you know, love? Did you, did you add anything to the interior? Did you suspension wise, did you do anything to the suspension that, you know, really blew your mind when you got, you know, the best customer service or products or anything like that? So you bought a C10 and you either had AC at one time or it wasn't even an option. Well, Vintage Air has the solution for you. Their SureFit kits are designed to place the evaporator and hoses behind the dash for a factory clean look. In most cases, the SureFit systems will be controlled by your stock dash controls using their exclusive cable converters. The Gen 4 kit provides infinite just right temperature, air blending, and blower fan speed adjustments. The Vintage Air SureFit kits are the best value and the most completely engineered air conditioning system you can install in your C10. Add the fact that Vintage Air has been the most respected name in performance aftermarket climate control systems for 40 years. 40 years? Damn, son. The choice is obvious. VintageAir.com. Hey, guys. I've got Joe Road, Classic Performance Products, CPP back. Joe, let's talk X10 spindles. Go. Yeah, you know, CPP's... One of our most popular parts through the years has been our two and a half inch drop modular spindles, really popular part. Well, we've kind of taken that to the next step. You know, we've emulated late model Corvette Silverado Chevy technology into our new X10 drop spindles. They use a steel hub, sealed bearing hub, really strong piece. As you know, Joe, so many guys are building bigger trucks, bigger wheels, bigger brakes, everything bigger and better. Is this X10 something they should be considering? Oh, absolutely. It's oversized bearings. Definitely great for a guy using big brakes, big wheels, which I'm sure all your guys are. All right, guys, there you go. If you're looking to upgrade, you need a new spindle anyways. You're going to lower your truck. You're running a bigger wheel, a bigger brake. CPP's got it for you with their new X10 spindle. Joe, as always, thank you. CPP, ClassicPerform.com. It's ClassicPerform.com. Marque has been in business for over 40 years. It all started in the original owner's garage, from humble beginnings of a couple parts in a garage to a two-building manufacturing facility making over 6,000 parts. Marque has grown to be one of the country's premier truck parts manufacturers. They not only design the products, but also design the tooling to build the products, guaranteeing 
quality control. They have made their original parts from the original trucks. Aluminum strips are double polished, creating a mirror finish and crystal clear anodized. They use the highest quality, hand-selected, show quality wood that will hold up over time. Why? Because it's kiln dried to precision moisture levels, specifically for Marquet. They stock oak, pine, and many exotics, guaranteeing extremely fast delivery. All parts are manufactured in-house in Oklahoma City, USA. They offer quality parts built by Americans for old American-made trucks. So when you're looking for body moldings, bed strips, bed wood, and so much more, think Mar K. That's mar-k.com. Did you have a manufacturer or a company that you worked with that you really, you know, loved? Um, we had a guy that did the that did the seat for us, did the reupholstery job, and he's a local guy in Arkansas. Um, but he went above and beyond. He did a great job on the seat. Uh, we ordered uh, seat heaters in, so he installed heat heaters in the in the butt and back. So she's got uh, heat in the seat during the winter time and stuff like that. Um, we pretty much kept everything stock. We just went back to factory. Um, I was working at O'Reilly's at the time, and uh, I couldn't really use my discount for her. But I also do volunteer fire, and. Uh, our fire departments get a discount. So it was honestly the best route to just do everything stock. And um, yeah, so we just went back to factory, pretty much everything on the truck's lifetime warranty that way. Uh, we did consider doing some suspension stuff. We live out in the woods. It's pretty rough where we are. So, mm -hmm. you know, I love a lowered truck, but that really isn't ideal for her, you know. Um, yeah, everything's pretty much just stock like it was when her dad had it. And that's kind of what she wanted from the beginning anyway. So it just kind of worked out that way. So I'm digging the uh, the heated seats, keeping the butt <laughs> warm and the back warm. That's pretty cool. Now in Arizona, I don't have to worry about that. I mean, not much. <laughs> but uh, so what do you do? You run a little 12 volt times two or you just pull power and then run it up the back? Or what? what's that look like? Yeah, so Dorman actually makes the product. Um I can't remember the part number. I wish I did, but, uh, yeah, it's basically just a four, four pads and you just put them in, um, over, over your cushion and whatnot. And then it actually has a switch already built in. So you can just, we, we just put it in the floor underneath, but you could install it in the seat if you wanted to. Yeah. And then you just run power to it. It's already fusible link right there at the switch. So yeah, you just jump in and you heat one side at a time. There's two switches, one on either side and, yeah, it's pretty nice. Go to town. Uh, one thing you guys talked a little bit about some uncles. Um, what do your uncles say, Lindsay? They uh, they were actually my they're my, my mom's brothers, but uh, they grew up pretty much with my dad, you know. And so now they come over and they look at it and they're just like, "Oh man, you know, I can't, I cannot believe that this truck is sitting here and that you've got it running." And they've just told me like, Oh, I remember when that happened or, you know, I remember whenever he did that. And so it's, it's cool to hear the stories and they're, they're really proud, really proud of me. Good, good. Yeah, they should be. It's a, it is kind of a memory generator, right? Where you see yes. something, or like you said, a Nick, a, a dent, something that had happened. Is there anything left that you're, you know, still wanting to get done before, you know, the end of this year, or is there still certain things that, are, are you're just kind of I'm, I'm getting some money together or I'm waiting on some parts or you know where are you at with that uh we really wanted to get a little bit of uh pinstropping done you know and uh get some words on the door not really sure on on what we're going to go with there but a few little finishing touches that would be so cool if you could yeah. you know like the old school I, I love the lettering you know you yeah know, just anything just anything like that to bring it back. So good, good. Well, I, I love that you were able to share the story with us. Um, I think we're going to push everybody over to your IG, both of your Instagram, so they can see this. Obviously, I'll be reposting some different things. Uh, you did a great job on that, you know, that story that I saw. And uh, I can't wait to, you know, just kind of dive in and, and, and follow along as you and your truck and you continue to kind of grow with that. So we do appreciate it. Thanks for sharing your story. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Drew. Hey, before we go, let's uh, go ahead with both of your IGs because I don't want to mess them up. So, Lindsay, what's your Instagram? Just Lindsay Bell. 
Well, no, hold on, because it's, <laughs> it's it's a little different. It's it's definitely different <laughs> than just Lindsey Bell. So it might be the Arkansas way of spelling Lindsey, but it's a little different. So go ahead with the. I mean, oh. I, I go ahead with the spelling. L y n z i e b e l l e. Lindsey Bell, uh, no underscores, just all Lindsey Bell, right? Yep. Okay, so. Uh, L Y N Z I E B E L L E. And then Drew, what's your, what's your IG? My Instagram is Drew's Lens YouTube. And um, I should say, I do have a YouTube channel, Drew's Lens. Uh, I have quite a bit of the build already on there, you know, um, just break up here and there. Um, I have some of that on there, but we did film everything from beginning to end. So I haven't finished putting the video together yet, but I've got everything documented and hopefully this fall we'll have a, a complete build video ready. And again, that's, is it Drew with an S, Drew's Lens? That's correct. Yes, sir. All right, Drew's Lens. We can check it out on IG, check it out on uh, YouTube. Thank you guys both for your time. And Drew, thanks for being a volunteer firefighter because I get a lot of thanks, but I'm getting paid. And so, so for you out there doing what you're doing, uh, you know, answering that call when you're, when you're just called as a volunteer. So thank you for doing that. My pleasure, man. Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Can you dig it? I can dig it. Rad story, right? Totally cool. Glad you got the truck back. Lindsay, Drew, Lindsay, thanks again for sitting down with us for you guys. Safe travels over the next few weeks, all the different shows going on. And remember, you've got uh, pretty much today to get in for the raffle for the Lost Angels Children Project. And then you've got August 31st, UP LED 20. Save 20% on that special promo code they got going on. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Have a great week.